السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Dear brothers and sisters around Islam I advise each and every one of you to fear Allah and to be mindful of his rights upon you and to be conscious to be wary and to be watchful of Allah, the mighty and the most high, recording everything that you do and say, watching you, listening to you. Allah is ever aware and ever informed of that which you think about, that which you feel, that which you premeditate on, let alone that which you do, let alone that which comes from your heart, that which comes from the depths of your mind, into your hands and your feet and your tongue and the list goes on of your bodily actions and movements. And this is the advice of Allah to his servants. Allah has advised us to fear him. He has commanded us to fear him. The Prophet ﷺ left his companions when he left this world and went to a much better place, a more pleasant place. The best piece of advice that he gave them, he said, Usikum I advise you to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said it to the best of the Muslims, and the Muslims who feared Allah the best, the Muslims who feared Allah the most, 
but that was his advice. When they thought, when they felt, and when they sensed, and when they realized that his days on this earth and this worldly life was coming to an end. His life was coming to an end. And he said, Usikum bitaqwallah. That's my advice that I give to you. And if you hold fast to Allah's taqwa, you'll never go astray. If you fear Allah, if you're mindful of Allah, you'll never suffer any problem, issue, difference, war, political strife, civil war, etc. You will win at the end of the day as long as you're mindful of this one piece of golden advice. And from the virtues of taqwa is that it allows and it enables a servant to be beloved to Allah. For Allah to love you. فَمَسْتَقَامُوا لَكُمْ فَاسْتَقِيمُوا لَهُمْ Allah says as long as they keep their word and their promise, then you keep your word and you keep your promise. You keep and you uphold your contractual agreements with the mushrikeen. Those whom you are there, your enemies, you're fighting them. But when it's a ceasefire, it's a ceasefire. When it's an armistice, it's an armistice. فَمَسْتَقَامُوا لَكُمْ فَاسْتَقِيمُوا لَهُمْ You keep the agreement that you have made with them. Why? We have the upper hand, we can cheat them. They're our enemies, maybe they're trying to cheat us. Maybe it's a ruse or a trick. Maybe they're bluffing us. Inna Allah yuhibbul muttaqeen. Allah loves the muttaqeen. That's why you keep your word. That's why you keep your promise. That's why you keep the contractual agreement that you make with someone who's an enemy to you. Let alone to your Muslim. Brother, sister, friend, teacher, student, employee or employer. Whatever they uphold and keep, you uphold and you keep. Not for the sake of dignity, or I'm a good person, or I'm an honest person, or that's just not how I am, or I'm not cut from that cloth. In Allah yuhibbul muttaqeen. Because Allah loves those who practice taqwa. And from taqwa is keeping your word, keeping your promise. From taqwa is upholding your end of the bargain and your end of the agreement. Amma ba'd. Qal al-Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala fi kitabihi al-jami' al-sahih. حدثني عبد الله بن محمد قال حدثنا عبد الملك بن عمرو قال حدثنا زهير بن هرب عن محمد بن عمرو بن حلحلة عن عطاء بن يسار عن أبي سعيد الخضري وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنهما عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال ما يصيب المسلم من نصب ولا وصب ولا هم ولا حزن ولا أذن ولا غم حتى الشوكة يشاكها إلا كفر الله بها من خطايا أو كما قال رحمه الله والحديث أخرجه الإمام مسلم and Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim on the authority of Abu Sa'id Al Khudri and also reported by Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنهما may Allah be pleased with them both the Messenger of Allah عليه الصلاة والسلام said ما يصيب المسلم anything that befalls a Muslim any calamity any tragedy any misfortune any bad luck something that falls and happens to a Muslim من نصب ولا وصب نصب يعني التعب exhaustion and fatigue وصب يعني المرض المزمن المرض الدائم a chronic illness a continuous sickness a cancer something that doesn't come and go but it stays with you ولا هم ولا حزن nor stress nor sadness ولا أذن ولا غم harm annoyance Anxiety and grief. Wala adhan wala ghammin. The Prophet ﷺ says anything that happens to a Muslim of these things, being tired, being constantly sick, being stressed, being worried, being annoyed, being bothered, hatta shawka, even a thorn, yushakuha, that the Muslim is pricked with, or stabbed with, or pierced with. إِلَّا كَفَّرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا مِنْ خَطَايَاهُ None of this will happen to a Muslim. It never happens to a Muslim. It never takes place to a Muslim. إِلَّا Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expiate this Muslim's sin. Through the sickness that you suffer, the sadness that you suffer, the anxiety, the grief, the stress, the worry, and the list goes on. Now let's ask ourselves the question. When's the last time someone was pricked by a thorn? Do we walk with bushes? Do we go out and pick roses? Do we live on farms? How many things that we have are crude wood in which you can get a splinter easily? Some brothers who are carpenters, some brothers who are handymen who fix things. But you work in the office and you get a paper cut. A paper cut is something that hurts, it's painful, 
And oftentimes it's something that you don't even realize takes place until it's too late. Or a splinter. Or let's get even more technical in 2020. You drop your cell phone on the floor and the screen cracks and you pick it up and you brush it off. And the next thing you know, you have glass in your fingertip. Is this not the case? It could be a paper cut. It could be shards of glass. It could be an actual piece of wood. It could be a thorn. It could be a nail in your tire. You get a flat tire driving down the road. Hot to show cut to you shack away. Or it could be a bone from a piece of fish. Eating a piece of fish and there's a small tiny bone that you didn't see. And it pokes you in your gums. إِلَّا كَفَرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا مِنْ خَطَايَاهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will use these tribulations, these misfortunes, these calamities, these hardships, these difficulties, big or small, major or minor, significant or insignificant, noticeable or unnoticeable, إِلَّا كَفَرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا مِنْ خَطَايَاهُ Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you, will pardon you, will wipe away, will cover up, he will hide, and he will pardon you of your sins. These are golden words of our beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How many of us become tired on a daily basis, going to work, looking after children? You become tired physically, you become mentally tired, you become exhausted. How many of us suffer from sicknesses and illnesses, diabetes and cancer, breast cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer, throat cancer, cancer of the pancreas, this type of illness. How much insurance do you pay every month? How many times do you go to the hospital? How many needles do you get? And that's another manifestation of hatta shoka to you shakuha. Your little son, your little daughter is crying. I don't want a needle, Abby. Needles hurt. Say, son, if you get this needle and you take this needle, Allah will forgive you of all the times that you were bad. Allah will bless you. He will reward you. He will raise your status. Hatta shoka. Even a needle is included in this hadith. So we can become tired on a daily basis. We become worn out and stressed out on a daily basis. And that's why people take vacations. They spend thousands of dollars to unwind, to recreate, to relax. And they want to forget their stress and they want to forget their worry. How many of us become sick and ill? We walk around with illnesses, surgeries, hip replacement, knee replacement, constant migraines, and the list goes on. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Wala hem. Hem, the stress about the future pertaining to your deen, your religion. Is my son going to make it? I only have one son. I don't have two sons. What if my son grows up and he's a loser? What if he doesn't want to be a Muslim anymore? What if he chases women? What if he's stuck in the dunya? What if my son is physically weak? What if my son doesn't carry on the family business like I taught him? What if my daughter grows up and she doesn't want to wear the hijab? You know how disgraceful that is and how shameful that is? When you walk into the airport, and you see someone with a name tag, and the name tag is a Muslim name, or an Arabic name, and they're dressed how they're dressed. And they say, are you Muslim, brother? He says, yes, I'm Muslim. Well, I used to be a Muslim. Now I'm a Christian. I reverted to Christianity. I don't believe in that anymore. I left the Middle East. I left North Africa. I left, I left West Africa. I'm not a Muslim anymore. But I did study the Quran when I was younger. I did do tafid. I did have teachers, I did go to the mosque, I used to be religious, but I stopped, I'm not into that lifestyle anymore. It's shameful, and it's stressful. You're a Muslim, you pray, you fast, you make hajj, but your daughter doesn't want to be a Muslim. Your son doesn't want to be a Muslim, or debt, money that you owe. And it wasn't your fault that you owe the money. It wasn't your fault that you're behind in the payments, but it's just a debt that's overpowering you, that's causing you stress and grief and worry. Having a test and an exam in school and college. I have a teacher that's going to make a very difficult exam, a very burdensome exam. I'm studying, but I'm not sure if I'm going to pass the test. And anything else that you stress out and worry about. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, وَلَا أَذَن وَلَا غَمِّن And other includes all of the previously mentioned things. Physical harm, physical stress, mental tiredness, and the list goes on. وَلَا غَم And what's meant by غم is anxiety. Is extreme sadness, extreme grief, in which the thought gives you a chill. The thought causes the hair to stand up on the back of your neck. The thought causes goosebumps, and you have an anxiety attack. You can't breathe, you sweat, you need to sit down, because that thing is that terrifying. Of this life, and of the hereafter. The Messenger of Allah says, Even the smallest, most minute, most insignificant thing that happens to the Muslim, it will be a means of his sins being expiated. Many scholars of Islam, they say that this hadith includes the Muslim who's patient 
and the Muslim who is impatient. The Muslim who looks forward to the reward and the Muslim that it just happens to. I cut my finger today. I got stitches today. I fell on the ground today. I stepped on a piece of glass today. I got into a car accident today. I got diagnosed with this type of cancer today. I got this type of illness. I got divorced. I got, I got, I got, and I got. Whether he realizes it is a reward and a virtue or not. Many of the scholars of Islam, they say that the Muslim who is afflicted and the Muslim who suffers, his sins are expiated. And other scholars, they say this is only for the Muslim who is patient and for the Muslim who looks forward to the reward. And the Muslim who does not complain, the Muslim who does not suck his teeth. Oh man, holler, get mad, become disgruntled, become impatient. If he does that, then he doesn't get any reward. So you get sick, you get tired, you get betrayed, certain things happen to you in this lifetime, and you get no reward, rather you get sin. So the Muslim who's conscious, the Muslim who's mindful, the Muslim who has heard of this hadith and understands it and ponders upon it, is never going to lose. He's never going to lose. So just stop and think about how many things happened to you on the way to Juma today. Did you not get stuck in traffic? Did you not get into an argument with your wife? Did your husband not say something mean to you before you came? Did your son not give you a hard time? Did you not lose your phone? Did you not run into something? Did you not have to get a fee or a ticket? All of those things are means of your sins being expiated in Allah Ta'ala. Whether they're the minor sins or whether they're the major sins. And if you have no minor sins, then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala will raise you and will elevate you and He will give you more reward. We ask Allah the Mighty and the Most High by His beautiful names and perfect attributes to understand this beautiful hadith and to implement this hadith and to be from among those who are forgiven for their sins and pardoned for their sins for every major or minor thing that takes place to them in this world. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatullahi wa salamuhu ala ibadihi alladhina astafa amma ba'd qala al-anamatu ibn al-qayyim rahimahu Allah ta'ala wa radhi anhu fi al-hadi al-nasu kulluhum musabuna لا تظن أن أحد بمعزل عن المصائب إما بفوات محبوب أو بحصول مكروه انتهى كلامه رحمه الله ابن قيم الجوزية may Allah have mercy upon him he said الناس كلهم مصابون everyone is afflicted everyone suffers everyone experiences a tragedy and or a calamity الناس كلهم مصابون everybody goes through problems لا تظن أن أحدا بمعزل عن المصائب. Don't think for a second that someone in this world is free from problems. And why would you think that? Why do you think that someone is free from problems? Well, this brother, he's knowledgeable. He's a scholar of Islam. He's a student of knowledge. He's an imam. He doesn't go through the problems that we go through. He can't relate to our problems. He's an imam. He's a scholar. He's memorized the whole entire Quran. He's memorized the whole entire Sahih al-Bukhari. He's memorized more books than I've read. Of course, he doesn't have stress at night. Of course, he doesn't have marital problems. Of course, he doesn't have financial issues. Everyone gives him everything. They all give him money. They take care of him. He's knowledgeable. So therefore, he's not going to be afflicted by what we were afflicted with. Someone who's wealthy. He has money. Everybody knows Fulan is wealthy. Mashallah. His family has been wealthy for years. He has houses. Not a house, houses, he has properties, he has businesses, cars come and go, money, this is nothing to him. He doesn't have the problems that I have, I'm poor. I work from check to check. I don't make hajj, I don't make umrah every year. I don't have multiple wives. I don't have all of these expensive things, but he does. So therefore, he doesn't go through the problems that I go through because I'm poor. A woman, she looks at another woman, mashallah, she's beautiful. Look how beautiful she is. Allah gave her natural beauty. A nice body, beautiful features. She's charming, she's wonderful. As far as me, I'm really not that attractive. Or some people say I'm ugly, I don't look that well. My body I'm not comfortable with. I'm totally insecure. I don't have the looks and the features that she has. So therefore, she doesn't have to go through the problems that I go through. Trying to get married, trying to stay married, look at myself in the mirror, and the list goes on. Lack of self-confidence, because she's beautiful. لا تظن أن أحدا بمعزن على المصائب. Ibn Qayyim says, do not think that no one is free from problems. These people, they don't go through the problems that we go through because we're black people. We had to suffer. We went through this. 
We went through this tragedy and this calamity. We were in America before you came. You can't understand our problems. You don't understand the problems that we go through. We have to celebrate our problems yearly. And the whole entire world is going to celebrate our tragic event and happening. And they're going to pay us money and they're going to give us reparations. And we're going to make museum after museum, movie after movie, film after film, celebration after celebration about how we suffered at the hands of this tyrannical leader and state. لا تظن أن أحد بمعزن على المصاب. Don't think you're the only one. Do not monopolize suffering. Don't think that you're the only person that has problems and issues and worries. الناس كلهم مصابون. Everyone is going to suffer, and everyone is going to get some type of misfortune. How and why? Oh, Ibn Al Qayyim. He says, إما بفوات محبوب. Something beloved being taken away from them. My son died. In the incubator, my wife that I loved for all of those years, she died in a horrible car accident. My health—I was the strongest, fastest, most nimble person. Now I'm in a wheelchair and I have a cane. Fawati mahbub, something that you love is taken away from you. It goes away from you. It leaves you. Oh, bi husuli makruhin, or something that you hate, something that you detest, something that you dislike, something that you're not fond of. It takes place and it happens. Today you're together, tomorrow you're separated. Today you're standing and walking and running and jumping and tomorrow your knees are bad, your back is bad, your hips are bad, your legs are bad. Today you have nice fine hair and tomorrow you're bald. Today you're beautiful and lovely and tomorrow your face is wrinkled and cracked and sagging. That's the nature of life. So how does the Muslim navigate through these problems? How does the Muslim win no matter what? How does the Muslim stay and remain undefeated? is realizing that Allah Azza has decreed this upon me. And if I'm patient, if I'm persevering, if I do not complain with my tongue or my heart or my mind, I will be rewarded. And there's something that comes which is everlasting. There's a place in which there is no sadness. There's no jealousy. There's no envy. There are no backbiters. There are no backstabbers. There are no people who cheat. There are no people that are sly and slick. It's a place that is everlasting joy, everlasting bounty, everlasting happiness. I don't have to travel to Florida in the winter to get away from the snow and the ice. I don't have to do that. The weather is always perfect in this place. Not too hot, not too cold. There's no tragic event happening in this place. So the Muslim realizes is that he cannot lose as long as he's patient. And as long as he realizes that Allah is going to test me and he's going to test you. The black, the white, the yellow, the red, the green and the purple. Those who are wealthy and rich and those who are poor and destitute. Those of high birth, the aristocrats, the nobility and those who are peasants, the lowlier people who don't have a good family name. Allah will test you if you have muscles and strength and you're a good fighter. And Allah Azzawajal will also test you if you're frail and weak. Everyone is going to be tested. But what do you do with the test? How do you manage the test? What do you look forward to with the test? And most importantly, what happens when you do that? What did the Prophet ﷺ instruct and inform his companions to do? When something happens to them and when something takes place. So we ask Allah to make us of those who are patient, to make us of those who are perseverant, and to make us of those who understand that calamity, misfortune, trial and tribulation is the sunnah of Allah. It's a law sunnah and it's going to take place and it's going to happen whether you like it or whether you like it not. How you deal with it, how you manage, quit, persevere, that is between you and yourself. Aqulun qawli hadha wa astaghfir Allah ta'ala ni wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu innahu kana ghafaran subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allah, 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 Allah,